Some people just don't get it. Possession of the testing results. If you could, Council. Council? This is crucial. If, you know, if you're flying back that a long time ago last year. That's Howard Brown. He's the Revere Neighborhood Developers Association attorney. I don't care that he doesn't want to talk to me, but I do care that he told Cliff Pisano I'm not a real journalist. Not only am I a real journalist, sir, I've been a zoning manager in the area, okay? I work for the Indianapolis Star. Did I cease to be a journalist when I stopped working there and went to law school? Well, that's not what the Revere Journal thought. They published my work on a number of occasions. Uh, furthermore, that's not what the Boston Herald thought. And their attorneys uh, <laughs> clearly subpoenaed me as a member of the media. That's not what 360,000 people on YouTube uh, would have to say about it. And uh, most recently, uh, more than a handful of House representatives in New Hampshire I definitely think I'm a journalist. You watch that movie. So that's what I have to say to you, basically, in a nutshell, Attorney Brown, I'm a journalist. Uh, just because you don't like what I say doesn't make me any less of a journalist. Have a good day. So the upshoot from today's court session is that Mr. Pisano and uh, Revered Developers may settle. Uh, he wants a privacy fence and he wants those test results, the actual initial test results uh, that were done by McPhail and Associates. He wants those things made public so that you know, the, the public should have known about the results a long time ago. That's his contention. The little problem, the little snag right now as far as you stipulating uh, with, with the developer is the variance, uh, Mr. King, was granted on a deception. Gentlemen, are we going to come to a conclusion on this case, or what do y'all think? Yeah. Maybe. So, Mr. Pizano, if you want to talk, I'm happy to do that. I'm not going to do it with Mr. King. Oh, that's fine. I don't want to interrupt. If you guys have some of the discussions, I just don't want to interrupt that. I just asked if it's possible that something may occur. Yeah, it is. Okay. That sounds good. And uh, I'll step aside. Did you have some discovery requests for him, or how's that go? Or they been at complaint, or what's what's the status of all that? I'll be over here if you want to talk to him. Did you file it? Uh, did you serve him in a copy of it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. That's why uh, I up on that whole it, it seems like you guys have to maybe take a look at the 9A rule and make sure that there was compliance, and if not, because you know, ultimately, the way I see it, even if this complaint were dismissed, Here's the here's the kicker. You can always file a separate complaint right, in nuisance. Right. He just mentioned he meant, if anything goes wrong after the fact. Right. I mean, this forgive me. The the, the little problem, the little snag right now, as far as you stipulating uh, with, with the developer, is the variance. Uh, Mr. King was granted on a deception. There's a specific right. question yeah. about what described the conditions of the soil, the top, topography of the soil. Right. The person, I don't know if it was Miss Houston, that person actually did a little bit of a hide the peanut on that question uh -huh. at the Zoning Board Appeal hearing. Right. In other words, the this question was specifically asked, yeah. and her answer, which right. we can show right. them tomorrow, yeah. was, an ev was a complete evasion, a complete successfully evaded the question. Is that right? Specifically and, and successfully. And you were there at that hearing, sir? And yes. that's when you heard that? Well, no, he was at the zoning board hearing. I was at right. the zoning board of appeals. Appeals. Oh, you were so, at the appeals? But I didn't hear her. I yeah. don't know. It's on the record. It's on a written, fixed written record. And how did you How did you come into that knowledge of this? Because I've been pouring over the man's stuff. Cause... Uh, I see. Well, why don't you email me that? Oh, definitely. What you've got so far with this. Into. Well, as you may know, uh, what we did do was uh, I went down to the fire station, I went down to City Hall, and I was able to, to pull up the proof from the uh, permit cards back in 1924, I believe, that there was indeed gasoline stored on the premises. So, at this point, you know, what we're looking at now is uh, what are the proper procedures in order to proceed further. Obviously, we've kind of exposed the fact that they're going to have to do some testing. 
Mr. Pisano believes that they may have already removed the tanks at some point using a bill permit under uh, false circumstances and false pretenses. So all that's going to come clear when that ground is broken. We're gonna, I'm going to be there with this camera. We're going to go to the EPA right now, and we're going to put them on notice that you know I need to be there when that ground is broken. You know, it, my father was an environmental chemist. And, you know, let's call it residue chemist. So you know, I was in zoning. So naturally, I'm going to follow this stuff, and I'm an attorney. So of course, I'm going to follow this. People ask me, "What's your business here?" My business is an American citizen, right? You know, and a reporter and a journalist and all those things. So I'm just, you know, you can't keep me out of this. You can't keep Cliff out of this, or you out of this as a reporter. We're here. Deal with us. Right. Deal with the law. I've been here for 46 years, and I'm going to be here. For, my father's 86. I'm going to be here for a long time. <laughs> so they're going to have to deal with me. I know, that's right. <laughs>